This season on Chef Class, it's all about variations. We'll be showing our home cooks different recipes highlighting one ingredient. Become a master chef from the comfort of your own kitchen. Chef Class Variations, add some diversity to your kitchen. Hi and welcome to Chef Class Variations. I'm Chef John Schneeberger and with me today... France Lacroix. And Greeno. We've got a beautiful chicken curry, we've got basmati rice, and we're even going to make naan bread. You really don't want to miss this. All right, so Nanj is already set up with your yeast in your water. Uh, you got a beautiful bloom happening. Can you yeah. explain how you got this place? Um, well, I put some sugar and yeast, because sugar and yeast together, that it activates it, and, mm -hmm. and some warm water, okay. and just give it a mix, and you let it sit for about five minutes. And so not cold, not hot, just nice and warm, yeah, right? Yeah, just warm. Okay, and we're using dry active yeast? Yes, dry active yeast. You stirred them together. I see your whisk right here. Yes. It's important, right? Yeah, yeah, it'll stick to the bottom if you don't. All right, so let's move this aside for a second. Now, you're also set up to do the actual dough itself. Can yeah. you walk us through that, please? Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the flour and some baking soda and I'm going to, or er, baking powder, Okay. sorry, That's great. and I'm going to uh, sift it and then once that's sifted I can add in salt and sugar, some salt and sugar, and then once that's done um, I'm going to take the yeast mixture here and I have to add some yogurt and olive oil in. So, so the yogurt's going to give it some nice flavor, a little yeah. bit of acidity. Excellent. Okay. And moisture. A little bit more moisture. Okay. And then you just want to incorporate it together. Make sure it's all incorporated in. And then once that's done, you're going to put the yogurt mixture in with the flour and baking powder. Make sure we get all that in there. Yeah. There we go. And you just use your hand and incorporate it all in together to make a dough. kind of starts out as a big sloppy mess, right? Yes, it does. It does. <laughs> but it will be beautiful once we're done. All right. So that's done? Yep. So it feels very, very smooth, right? Yeah. Looks really nice. Has great texture, great elasticity. Mm -hmm. Right? We'll kind of work it around again. And look how beautiful that dough actually looks. Absolutely smooth, satiny, gorgeous, right? Yep. So how do I finish this? What, what's important for me to do now? Well, you need some saran wrap, and you gotta you gotta put a little bit of flour on top. You gotta let it rest for two to four hours. All right. Now, France is set up over on this side here to actually put our curry chicken together. Let's take a look. Hi, chef. So we're gonna use a beautiful chicken that we have here. We're gonna we have a hot pan, and we're gonna add a little bit of oil here, and while the oil is coming to temperature. We're going Beauty. to season our chicken. So this has been sautéing. We had a beautiful, beautiful golden brown color. Let's flip them and see what we got. Okay. Wow, look at that. This is what you want to achieve. Okay. have good flavor. So that's not just going to help with look. That's going to be flavor, isn't it? It is. It is absolutely going to be flavor. Beautiful. It's gorgeous this way. We're going to leave it a few minutes on the side as well. So usually uh, we're going to be kind of pan frying, medium temperature. We don't want to go too fast. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? About a minute and a half, two minutes each side? Yeah, probably that would be right just enough to get the color and to start our flavor base. So this has been about two minutes. It looks beautiful on both sides. We're going to move them over. We already have some chicken fried uh, that we did a little bit before the shoot. Um, let's get these in here and we can move on to what's next. That's gorgeous. That's great, friends. Thank yes, you. Thank you. It does look through at this point because we're going to finish cooking it in the oven. Exactly. So still completely raw inside, but we got great color on the outside. Yes. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah. okay. So now we have nice little bits of flavor in the, fr in the bottom of our pan. So this is all the crispies from the chicken? Yeah. Wonderful. Chicken. So nice flavor there. So we're going to add to this the onions. 
So we're going to pan fry for a little bit here to add more flavor. And we always put the onion first and then the garlic on top of the onions. So that way it's going to protect the garlic because the garlic has more sugar in it and it has a tendency to burn and become uh, bitter and acrid. So that's always a good rule. Onions first, then the garlic. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. So I think I'm going to add that. Absolutely. Spice mix in. So the spice mix, as I was talking about uh, earlier, is going to give you color and nice flavor. So we are going to go and in and put our mix of uh, dry. So you got your dry spices, dry spices we're your and also a uh, nice uh, freshly grated ginger. Beautiful. And we're going to cook this for a little bit so that way we're going to reduce the flavor. Mmm, gorgeous. Yeah. So once that, this has cooked for a few minutes to release the, f the flavor and aromas, we're just going to make up the sauce, really, and add our coconut milk and cream yep. to our dish. That's going to make up our sauce. Okay, so you can see it's starting to come up to a boil around the outside right there, so we're just about there. The ginger now is releasing its aroma and flavor. And I'll tell you something, the, the, the curry uh, spices, the masala that we have in here, and that ginger is really standing out, so. Yeah, very beautiful. Wonderful. Good, so we're just about there? About there, yeah, Excellent. totally. So, so we want to transfer this. What we're going to do, we'll turn that off, and we're gonna literally put this right in. It doesn't have to be completely covered. You want it at least halfway. There we go. So you can see what we've got. All the onions and the garlic and the ginger, right? The sauce is in with the chicken. You've got that beautiful steam rising. We're going to take our aluminum foil. We're going to cover it really nice and tight. Shiny side in, right? The shiny side reflects the heat. So nicely sealed. There we go. And France, this needs to go in the oven. Can you tell me again what temperature, what time? It's going to be uh, at 350 degrees Fahrenheit and for about 35 to 40 minutes. Fantastic. So if you want to throw that in, yep. we got a great chef tip. It's something that you really don't want to miss. So why don't we take a look? We're going to cook our chicken and we'll be right back. Kitchen talk sounds like a completely different language. We'll explain some definitions that will help you become a better communicator. Welcome to Chef Talk today. We're a little bit busy, but we're going to talk about kitchen talk today. Got, I need two steaks on the grill for table five. Yes, Chef. Damon, where's your carrots, man? I need them. I'm not that done yet, man. Come on, dude. Chelsea, hop over, help them out. Yes, Chef. Thank you. Bye. When they're saying behind in the kitchen, they're talking. That's the most important words in the kitchen, especially also sharp behind. And when I was talking to Damien about his mise en place, that's all your stuff. If you have a signed plate, you have to have everything with you at all times and it has to be all done before service. Kat, I'm waiting for those steaks. Come on, come on. I'm in the weeds. When Kat says she's in the weeds, that means she's far behind on her chits and she needs to pick it up and hurry up. Expand your food repertoire and become a master chef from the comfort of your own kitchen. Welcome back to Chef Class Variations. All right, it's time to start working on the nan. So, Ange, you have your nan, it's doubled in size. Yes, it has. Uh, let's, let's go, go from there. there. Okay, well, as you can see, we had to wrap it with the plastic wrap. And look at, feel that. Oh, that's right. beautiful. Look how fluffy that is. That's absolutely yeah. marvelous. Okay, so that's double in size. We've got that yeast really developing the dough. Yeah. You can S smell it. Beautiful, <laughs> nice and smooth. Okay, where do we go from here? Well, we put it right here. I'm gonna take a little bit of flour. Okay. Like that, so yeah. it doesn't stick. And then, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut them up into portions, probably mm, about that big, couple so of ounce ounces. So, ounce and a half, two ounces. Yeah, we don't want like huge that. pieces. No. We don't want nan about that big. Yeah, right? yeah. Because you can make nan huge if you want to. You can to. make it whatever size you wanted to. Fantastic. Okay, so let's do that. So, I'm just do this here. So, we're just going kind of by eye just to make sure that they're all the same size. Yeah. And what's, what do we have to do with these? 
Uh, we're going to roll them into balls. Okay. And so then we're round them up. Yep. And here's some flour. So. Okay. So I'm just going to push. Yeah. You want to keep cutting, and I'll. I'm just going to push straight down. I'm using this part of my hand, and I'm letting them round up nice and even. And I'm pushing down quite firm. There's a little bit of flour on the bottom, so they want to kind of run away on me. There we go. Okay, so as we get them done, what we're going to do is just a little flour on the table, yeah. just to make sure that they don't actually grow onto, we'll leave enough room between them um, that they can relax a little bit. The reason that we have to let them rest right now is that every time you work with a bread dough, you build that gluten back up again. That gluten is tough, it's, it's kind of elastic -y. and if we don't allow them to relax, when it's actually time to bake them and the yeast really wants to produce CO2 gas, it can't stretch the gluten out because it's so tough. So we need to let this relax, we need to let it rest just a little bit before we actually try to turn this into our kind of final bread product. So while we're waiting for our nan to relax, we're going to go over here and we've got a beautiful basmati rice that Francis is going to put together for us. Very well. So I'm warming up my pan here. I'm going to add some clarified butter or ghee, if you wanted to as okay, well. Okay, so clarified butter or ghee is actually butter that has the what removed? The, the water? The, the, the water and the milk solids That's removed, right. so it doesn't burn as easily. Beautiful. So this is really just butter fat, right? Yes, it is. But it has that beautiful flavor of butter. It does. Excellent. Okay. We can start adding the onions because we're going to have a little bit of vegetables into our bas basmati rice. Okay, give us some flavor. Yeah. Give us a little bit of That's color. That's right. So a little bit of onions. So again, you can hear, yeah, every time something goes into the pan, even if we're not trying to get color, if it doesn't have a sizzle, even a little bit of a sizzle, there's a problem. If it doesn't have a sizzle, what's going to happen is it's going to go into a cold pan. It's not going to seal and it's going to actually leach the flavors out of, of, of the actual product itself. And if it does that, it's kind of like cooking in a wet mess, right? So you lose flavor. It doesn't kind of brown up nicely. Really want to make sure your pan is hot enough for whatever it is you want to put in it. That's right. Yeah. And then now that uh, the onion has started to soften a little bit, I'm going to add, uh, in this case, we're using uh, green and red pepper. It could be uh, green and yellow pepper. We could also uh, use uh, green pepper. We could use... Whatever we want, pepper. right? Yeah. Absolutely. I would use green onion. If we wanted to, we could probably even throw some hot peppers in here if we liked it, right? Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That would be fantastic. So we let that soften a little bit. So Francis got her ghee in here. We've got the onions and the peppers. Yeah. And then you're actually going to saute the rice that we've washed. Do you think we need maybe a little bit more butter in there? Yes, slowly. Yeah, be generous. Throw that right in there. Wonderful. So now we want to actually, again, saute the rice after you've washed it. Is that really important to this? It is important because it's going to keep your, uh, your individual grains of rice Individual. Right. So, mushy right. so the, the individual grains of rice get coated with the ghee with the clarified butter. And it prevents them from sticking together when they're actually uh, cooking later on. So you get that nice fluffy light rice. And of course the flavor, well there's just nothing wrong with the flavor as well. So beautiful. Yep. There we go. You can see again if you take a look inside here, let's just tilt this up. Look how shiny and how beautiful the actual individual grains of rice are. They've been coated with the butter. Oh, they're wonderful. Okay. And at this point, you may just want to add your two cups of water. I had one cup of rice, so the ratio is usually one cup of rice, two cups of water. Okay, now we went ahead and we heated up this water ahead. Water has to be hot. Anytime you're making rice, it has to be hot water. If you use cold water, the rice actually, the pores on the rice stay open and the starches leach out. Even if you've done this technique, the starches will leach out and you're going to gummy your rice. So hot liquid keeps everything kind of together, seals everything together, and the rice is much more fluffy. So a little bit of salt and pepper at this point, just yeah, for flavor. Just to for flavor. Exactly. Uh, a great chicken stock would be amazing. A vegetable stock would be amazing as well. Oh, right there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so we're going to stir it all in. What's the last part to do here? We have to make sure? Uh, we bring it to a boil and then we cover it. Once, once we cover it though, we just like bring it uh, bring down to low right. and then let it so cook very for low 15, simmer, 20 minutes. And very cover. low simmer, yeah. What we want to make sure that we do with rice as well is in this, it's 1.75 
almost two parts liquid to one part rice. We want to allow the rice, being a starch, to actually absorb the moisture and swell. If we keep the lid off, a lot of the moisture evaporates out, and so the rice stays hard. But if we put the lid on, all that moisture stays inside of the pot, and the rice actually absorbs it, and yeah. we got happy rice, and we got happy people who eat it, right? Absolutely. Fantastic. All right, so I think the nan is ready to go. So we're gonna go back over here, and we're gonna start working on our nan. So let me just turn this up a little bit. Ange, what do we got? Is it looking good? Yep. All right, so we can take a look at what we've got right here. And again, they're nice and soft. They look great. Can I have that water, please? Yeah. So we're going to do this together. What we're actually going to do then is we want to give this just a little bit of a coating. So we're going to dip it in just a little bit of flour. We want to shake off the extra into a little bit of water. And the water is, again, nice room temperature. Yeah. And we're going to start pulling this out. And you can see it's got a beautiful kind of elasticy, chewy kind of finish. It's almost like pulling a pizza dough, right? It's really soft. It's terribly flavorful. It's wonderfully flavorful. I absolutely adore it. And if it starts getting too sticky, then I'm just going to put it back into the water and it's going to really help me stretch this dough out. You kind of want it thin. If you get a little bit of breaking, you know what, we can live with that. Um, again, the dough does have yogurt in it and dough is really quite rich. So we're just going to pull it out. And again, kind of bite size, easy to eat. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So right into the pan, dry, no oil. There again, do you hear the you sizzle? You want to make sure it's hot, yeah. There we go, exactly, nice hot pan. Why don't we do a couple more? Yeah. Great, I'll grab the big one. We're both going for the same one. <laughs> I'm not gonna fight you for it. Okay, that's, a, that's good. <laughs> so really simple, this is done in a pan. I mean, again, this is so easy to make. You can actually do this in an oven if you want to. Again, very, very high temperature. You're gonna have a kind of a heavy rack to work with. Uh, some people will brush with a little bit of oil. I like to brush it with butter after it's done. So we're gonna do that in a little bit. Take a look at what we've got. Look how beautiful. A little bit golden yeah, brown. Yeah, golden brown, crispy. I like that kind of mottled look. It's not solid color. It's all kind of uneven and beautiful. Look at that, that's amazing. I'll let this one go just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so big. All right, so take a look at what we've got. Look how beautiful these are. We just flip them over, and there we are. Both sides of the nan, really lovely. So we're gonna move them off. We're, of course, gonna have our next batch ready to go. I'm just gonna push this aside right now. Move that over. Get it out of the way, thank you. Now, we've got some melted butter, yep. and we're just gonna lightly brush both sides of our nan with the melted butter. Again, clarified butter is perfect for this. We don't want too much. We don't want them to be soggy. Just a nice light brush. All right, I think we should check and make sure that these are absolutely delicious. So, look how gentle and delicate that is when we tear it. Mm. Let's find out. Oh, that's yummy. That's really yummy. Mm -hmm. That's really yummy. Okay, you know what? Chicken's in, rice is on. We got a whole pile of nan to finish. Why don't we take a little break? When we get back, we're gonna put the whole thing together. We'll see you in a minute. Hey, welcome back to Chef Class Variations. All right, we promised it'll all be ready. It's all ready. Take a look at how absolutely gorgeous that chicken is. The sauce is amazing. We added a little tiny touch of lemon to liven it up. You can adjust your salt if you want to right now, give it a little bit more seasoning, but it's supposed to be nice and light and thin. Um, more heat, totally up to you. We like it nice and mild. Yeah. So that's so the way we're gonna do it. Exactly. So here's the rice. Let's take a look at what we've got. Again, look how each grain of rice kind of falls apart. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm going to throw some toasted almonds in there. And we're going to fluff it up. And so just very, very simply, I want to take my rice and put it on the plate. Have a bit of color. We have our chicken. You can see that right there. And I just want to take an assortment 
of chicken pieces. So I have a little bit of the chicken breast here. There we go. Maybe a nice drumstick. Another piece of breast on this side. Okay, definitely have to have a little bit of sauce. So we're gonna fire some sauce right on top of all this chicken. Now, the garnish has to be very, very simple. You don't really want to do too much. It's so wonderful all the way it is that we're simply going to take a little bit of green onion, just right in the center, maybe a little bit around the plate. And this would actually mix in with our rice as we're eating, because the flavor is really something special. A little bit of lemon. Just gonna tuck those in. Wipe down my station. And right next to it, we've already taken our nice warm nan. And again, remember, I'm going to take a great big hunk of this nan and I'm dipping it in the sauce. That's the first thing I want to do. So that is how I would serve the curry chicken, basmati rice, and fresh nan. And if you like what you saw here today, you can go to loyalisttv.com and uh, there's some recipes on there, beautiful recipes, and past episodes. Yeah, it's a great website. You really should check it out, loyalisttv.com. And also come and visit us at Club 213. It's a student-run restaurant. On Thursdays and uh, Fridays, we're open for lunch and dinner, and it's wonderful, wonderful food. We hope to see you there. Come and see us. Excellent. Hey, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Chef Pass.